Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining and coming back to our Girls Inc. STEM series of videos. We are joined here with Miss Brianna today, and she is going to talk us through some of her experiences in college and in her professional life through STEM. So without further ado, let's get started. So Ms. Brianna, please introduce yourself. Let us know where you went to college, what your major was, and how you got to where you are at Girls Inc. Hi, Sarah. Thank you so much for having me today. Uh, I am Brianna Pendleton. I'm the mentoring and leadership coordinator over here at Girls Inc. of Greater Philadelphia in Southern New Jersey. And um, prior to joining on the team, um, I did my undergrad at Temple University. I knew when I got there that I wanted to study biology. So that is what my degree is in. Um, I also did a secondary major in psychology, which is kind of what led me over here to Girls Inc. I needed an internship and Girls Inc. was a great fit for me. And then I didn't want to leave. Um, so here I am. Awesome. Awesome. So going kind of into before you got to college, were you someone who always enjoyed STEM? Were you, you know, was that where you were naturally gravitating towards or how did you fall in love with the, with the, with the study really? Yeah, so even growing up, I was only somebody who loved math. I was not a writer or a reader. And though, of course, those things are necessary, that's just not what I loved. Um, I was the person in like third and fourth grade, like with my friends, like, let's play teacher. And they're like, why are we doing homework? It's the weekend. I'm like, because like, I need to know more. Um, I was like, my mom was also somebody who was very like on my, on me in terms of my studies. So she would give me like seventh, grade math and science books and I'm like mom I'm six like what am I doing Thanks, here mom. Uh, yeah thank you mom um so I was just always very loving of math um and then when I got to high school my honors biology teacher Mr. Welsh was absolutely incredible and just show like just pulled out my love for biology did I do amazing in his class no but I just loved it I fell in love and he's truly one of the reasons I decided to pursue that as my degree. Um, I ultimately also from a young age loving math and science was like, I'm going to be a doctor one day. Um, I really thought that was going to be the path for me. I got to college and though I realized I still love science and I still love STEM, that was not my route. Med school wasn't it for me. Um, and I'm loving the nonprofit and education sector instead. Yeah, I think what you just kind of talked about was the idea of having a dream job and, and going for it, but also staying flexible in that pursuit. When you got to college and you were kind of exposed to all these different careers and ideas and ways in which you can fall in love with science, technology, engineering, and math and make it a different career, was that hard to kind of, you know, since you had this idea of, you know, I wanna be a doctor, was it hard to change? Was it easy to be flexible? Um, cause I think a lot of students, especially college students go in thinking I'm going to do this and then, you know, aren't as flexible. So if you could talk about, you know, just your flexibility in, in achieving your dream and what ultimately it was. Yeah. I, I think that's a great question. Um, so many, I can think about just, just so many of the students that I started that degree with, I did not see them at graduation because they found other other niches, other passions. I remember um, I remember a guy I was in school with and both of us were biology majors. Both of us were like, we're going to med school, we're doing this. I think it was like a month in. He's like, actually, no, not for me. I switched his majors to like Spanish and French. He's like, I'm gonna be trilingual translator, work in international relations or something like that. And I'm like, to me, it was so incredible as somebody who I'm like, but, but a month ago, like our passion was science. And he's like, you know what? I switched it. I, I can still love science, but I want to go into this other field as well. Um, and I think that that is the beauty of college. Um, and that is the beauty of science and technology. Like it is everywhere. Somebody has to obviously had to code this computer for us to have this, this conversation right now. Um, there's, technology every literally everywhere we look in front of me there's an ipad there's a phone i'm on the computer like yeah. um it's surrounding everything that we do for me personally in college biology was tough and i made the decision pretty probably halfway through my college experience like i don't think i want to go to med school anymore and i think at that point i was also so 
far in but I was like I think I'm gonna stick through this degree exactly. because I don't want to backtrack and mm-hmm. start something completely over especially because I knew that I still love science and regardless I was gonna find something to do with that field mm-hmm. um and I have, and I have, and things have worked out great. I still think in another life I am, I am, or maybe this will be like when I uh, retire, I'm going to become like a marine biologist and just like Love swim it. with fish all day. Yeah, um, of course. That That's the, you know, dream end goal. That's yeah. the new one. <laughs> yeah. So kind of on a, a lighter note, maybe what's yeah. something that you thought was going to be a huge issue before you went to college um, that turned out being just okay or a non-issue, if there is anything? Hmm. Maybe you can think also in terms of like adjusting from hometown to city or it, not necessarily through the scope of, of STEM, but with something that, you know, you thought was like, oh no, this is going to be big and bad and tough and just turned out to be fine, yeah. not an issue. Yeah, I think that prior to leaving the school, I told my parents, you know, I'll go in a three hour radius of home. Um, which was like realistic three hours you can still drive easy peasy can still make weekend trips very easily and obviously I ended up in Philadelphia which is at about an hour and a half from home for me Um, and part of me is like you know what maybe you went too close Um, maybe I should have gone farther because while Philly is great and I love it here obviously I'm still here after graduation um, part of me sometimes wishes like you know you should have just like up and went to California you should have upped and went to Texas because ultimately it is, it's four years. Um, and my, my, my lacrosse coach back in high school used to always tell us during burpees and crunches and everything else, like you can do anything for one minute. And that's kind of mantra kind of always stuck with me. And truly like four, four years sounds like a really long time, but it goes by in a minute. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think that I looked at it, like I can't go far away from home and I definitely could have. Um, and, and it's yeah. definitely possible. So don't let, if I were to say, you know, to anybody, like, don't let distance stop you from, you know, taking that time to just explore something completely different, completely new. Um, cause now as somebody who's like, all right, now I have a job and I'm settled and everything else. I'm like, I can't just move to Texas. I can't just go to, I mean, I could never say never. Remember, remember you were saying, never. you know, about all these careers and things. So and don't rule it out. Don't rule it out. Never say never. Um, but definitely would be a little tougher than, than if I was still in school. Yeah, absolutely. Um, when you were in college in undergrad, were there any societies or clubs that you found particularly helpful, um, or in terms of, you know, outside of the classroom kind of activities that you would recommend or that stuck out for you? Yeah, I think definitely when it comes to outside, outside of the classroom, just find what you love. Um, yes, it's great to do organizations that are aligned with your major and aligned with what you want to do once you graduate, but you spend how many hours in class and studying, like find something else that is fun for you. Um, of course I was in like biology club, um, and other things along, you know, that had to do with my major. I joined med life when once upon a time when I still want to be a doctor. Um, But that was still just an incredible experience because I went, I was able to go to Peru through that um, and spent a week down in Lima um, working with like a mobile doctor, doctor's office that we would set up to different communities in rural and poor areas. Um, So that was just a really awesome experience that I got through that, that club. Um, I did our version, Temple's version of THON, which is Hudathon, and I just, loved 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 so much um gave me so many different skills that I was like I don't know how to do this um but who knew I could plan an event for a thousand people I was like oh I don't know what we're doing here but we're gonna figure this out so again just find things that you love join a sorority join that club that just is like hey I like art so I'm gonna go paint in my free time not everything has to be academic yeah. I stress that a lot <laughs> and I think that's that's so true that it, you know in building the whole student and what we talk about often in Girls Inc, building the whole girl, really kind of taking care of all the aspects of you. Okay. So of course, STEM, if that's your major, you have to take care of that. But I think what you've just said really kind of shows that you 
we're nourishing all aspects of of you and I think that's really cool so yeah I'm just gonna have fun. just have yeah. fun <laughs> yeah I, I think bottom line if nothing else fun must be had um so what do you think the biggest misconception about people who choose your major um is and then also if you could think of it particularly through the lens of a woman I think my experience in biology, I had this notion that, yeah, I had this notion that I would walk in and the room would be surrounded all, all men. Um, and I think that's the story that's often told and, you know, we're shifting that. And I think that when I got to school, it was a great thing to witness that I was like, wow, there's a lot of other women around me. There's a lot of, not a lot, but I'd say there's a, there's a handful of other black women around me. Um, and I will say that transparently, there weren't a lot of us. There was maybe like 10 of us in some of my lectures of 300. Um, but I'm like, we're here, we're, we're getting there. Um, there were of course other ethnicities in the group as well. Um, surprising, yeah, like surprisingly it was very diverse within the room, um, which I think I really appreciated because we, we, we again, we, research has showed like girls lose a love for STEM early. We are convinced very early on, boys are good at math and science, girls can't do it. Um, and even if we do love math or science, we should so do something easy in the social, si easy, I say that with quotes, in the social sciences instead. We're supposed to be in psychology and sociology and the nurturing, individuals and I, there's nothing wrong with sociology or psychology like I said I st also studied psychology for four years right um but I think that's the perception is that that is more if a girl is going to go into science they go into the quote not my word softer sciences um which is wrong right we know that is wrong <laughs> like, I don't want to always go into the doctor's office with some man staring at me I know, and we know working at Girls Inc., I, even as an adult, feel much more comfortable talking to another female about what's going on with me because she has been there. She goes. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so I think that was a great shift to see so many people around me, even though I wasn't going to med school, knowing like you, you and you and you are all going to med school. And that's great. Mm -hmm. And I really love to see that. Um, I would also say that biology from just my experience and looking around, like, biology was getting very diverse because I think that is often the typical major where people are like this is my step to go to med school whereas when I still looked over at the engineering school not many girls coming in and out of there at all um when I looked over in chemistry and physics still not many girls coming in and out of there um and those are the things that we, we definitely need to change yeah absolutely so We've talked a little bit about the, and I'm saying this also in air quotes, traditional career paths that biology majors tend to follow, which is kind of medical school, health sciences, things of that sort. Um, but if you could highlight both your career and maybe some other, and I'm again, using air quotes here, non-traditional career paths um, that somebody in a biology major, biology, maybe even STEM major um, goes into, if you could highlight those. Yeah, or something you think I mean, of. there's yeah, there's just there's so many. I it, um I think often when we just think of STEM, we think very, very, very um to the top of like you have to be a doctor or you have to be um I don't know astrophysicist and all these other things. And again, like I said earlier, like science, technology, engineering, math, they are literally all around us everywhere we look. Um, so me with my random dream of like I just want to swim with the dolphins and be a marine biologist and like take care of the fish for the rest of my life um there's, there's things like that out there there are individuals that I know they they're like I love science and I love nature so they are now like working at a farm and trying to like create not create but like it's um all like natural no pesticides all of that like trying to make really healthy and nutritious food as well as plants and everything else for us, right? So um, there are just, there are just so many avenues. I can't even possibly list. I'm trying to look around my room, like all of this was the idea, like, get inspired. I at, like, yeah, like I look at, like I have a bottle of mousse next to me. I'm like, some chemist had to sit in a lab and make this for me. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. um, somebody had to sit there and engineer and design this water bottle. Like, why does this water bottle work? Why is this great? Like somebody had to yeah. think of this. Um, it's just endless. It's so endless. Yes, yeah. I was. I feel like that is a weighted question because again, you're like, what am I supposed to do? Name every single career that you could have? Because in all <laughs> honesty, any anyone with biology or any kind of STEM is so interdisciplinary that it's kind of hard to say what's traditional and not traditional. So didn't mean to put you on the spot there. Um, kind of a, a random fun question is what was one of or some of your favorite undergrad classes? Hmm. Um, I think this was during my senior year. I took a handful of ecology classes. Um, so again, it was just like nature and plants. And um, I took an evolutionary ecology course as well. I just like bulked up on evolution and, and ecology. I think I took like four or five of those courses my senior You're year. You're actually um, an ecologist now. <laughs> I'm an ecologist now, swaying away from that. Um, they were all within my major. So I was like, sure, why not? Like, yeah. Let's do this. And they were loved. Like they were just great. I loved them. I loved my professors. Um, it was just learning to, to me, like, it was just so interesting, like learning all the way up, like how did a plant evolve into this? And why do plants act this way? And why does the, like all of the nature around us, like do these incredible, yeah. incredible things. Like why and did I all think this work? Also <laughs> what you were saying, like the, the teacher that you had before you got to college and also the professors, there's some course information that's interesting by nature, right? That's just like, oh, I really enjoy this subject matter. And then there's, some classes that you take, you're like, I'm not sure if I'm interested in it, but then the professor makes it wonderful and super interesting. So I think that's yeah. also something to, to highlight too. So that's just like, like the nerd in me. Like why do orga organisms and the nature, like why does all of this work right. this way? And yeah, my, my professor just like hyped it up in such a way. I think it was also mm -hmm. by senior year, I'd also just figured out, and it took me a while, like how to do college um, and like what step, my study techniques, like. I could study high school studying versus college studying, not the same thing. Um, and I don't think it was until like late junior year that I really figured out like how does studying yeah. work for me now. Mm -hmm. um, so hit senior year and I was like, all right, I got the hang of this, like this works. And I think because I was doing better, <laughs> I was just like, yeah, I, thought I was doing bad earlier on. Oh, but freshman I year like, I was. Well, oh yeah, freshman year. Let's not not good, not good. Not good. Not good. <laughs> and not even, not even, not even to my standards. It was just like objectively not great. <laughs> I dig myself out of that hole uh, very quickly. Um, and I think by senior year, I really realized like, okay, this is how I can study. And because I knew how to, classes also became easier and more interesting because I was like, all right, I really can get a grasp on that versus mm -hmm. constantly feeling like I'm pulling at straws my whole way, yeah. um, which freshman year definitely was. It was a lot of scrambling. Yeah. It was a lot of like, oh, let's crash course this at three in the morning. Um, part of the yeah, experience. So part of the experience, but definitely, definitely, definitely take, no matter what major you are, like take time to figure out your new study habits because yeah. it's definitely new. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. So goes, very swimmingly into my next question of was there a time that you felt like this is too much I'm switching majors I'm quitting this I'm gonna go do something else and how did you kind of persevere through that yeah I think a lot of not a lot of us but there's people I'm not gonna put a number to it but after you get to college or even as you pursue like masters doctorates etc like sometimes there's this feeling of like imposter syndrome where you're like what am I doing here? Um, and I think I definitely felt that, especially freshman year when I'm um, surrounded by all these people. I was in the honors program. These kids, young adults are crazy smart. I don't belong here. What is going on? Um, I remember it was my second semester, freshman year. Um, I finished my, it was like honors calculus two. I think I got a C or like a C minus. And at that point I was like, I'm flunking out of school. This is not for me. That's I'm it done. for me. It's done for me. Um, I, I, you know, of course I had to call my mom. Like I got a C. She's like, you passed. You made it through your freshman year. Breathe. Like, yeah, he, you can get through this. And I'm like, mm -hmm. I've never gotten a C in my life. And she's like, well, there's a first for everything. 
get it together. Right. You're, you're graduating college. <laughs> okay, well, right. And that perspective fine. is huge. And something that a lot of times when you go from, you know, a stellar high school student and you go on Big to the fish. Next, <laughs> exactly. And, and I think there is that, that learning, not a learning curve, but like yeah. getting into real life sure. is, is something that a lot of us aren't accustomed to in going to a, a big university or even a small university, whatever it is, but understanding that, you know, it's not the end of the world to not be getting straight A pluses in college because how many of us truly are. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's also, like you said, it's such a learning curve, right? So back in high school, what are things that I had to, I had to worry about? Um, and this is like privilege and I had to worry about going to school, getting good grades, and I was on the lacrosse team. So doing great in sport, doing, I'm not gonna say it was great, but like making sure I'm at practice at my games and doing well at school. That's all I had to worry about. You get to college and you're like, okay, I still have these things. And if you're playing sports, I decided not to play sports in college, but all right, so I still have to go to school. I still have to get good grades. Now I also have to like feed myself. Like I have to cook myself dinner every day. How does that work? Um, I don't just like show up to the cafeteria at a scheduled time every single day. Like, okay, let me figure that out. Uh, you're meeting all of these new people. Like, all right, I have to make completely new friends. That takes a lot of time and work. Like realistically, <laughs> like, that's seriously, also a lot of your energy. seriously. And then also fitting in like all of the other things that we talked about earlier, finding things that you love, where do you fit on campus and truly just where, where do you want to be? Where do you want to be on this campus and how do you want to spend the next four years? And it's all things that you're like, yeah, I never had to do before. I've known all of these people since I was six. And you're like, mm -hmm. no, this is a totally different ballgame. Yeah, yeah, totally. So I think that kind of shows, again, the perspective of what's happening here and now is important and that should be focused on, but there's also a bigger picture and bigger things coming together. So I think that really kind of showcases that well. So we're going to wrap up. We have a few more questions, but not going to take yeah. too much more of your time. Um, so what are some of the best leadership skills or qualities that you learned through your time, um, as a biology and psychology major? Um, I think time management is of course key, especially just seeing, just being in college in general and just learning how to manage your time. Um, especially if you're going to be a part of other things on campus um definitely crucial then there's you know if you're also adding in like a job into it and all of those other things like time management is so so important um I think just generally college helps you think more critically um because some of the classes like I think back in high school we were used to just like all right these are the facts now regurgitate it mm -hmm. um and then you get to college and you're in classes who are like no let's really analyze and talk about like why did this happen and what do you think and how did this happen? And you're like, I, my brain doesn't work that way. I'm like what? Like, you don't want me to just spit back an answer to you on the test? Like, I don't know how to do that. Um, so I think that's just, it teaches you a different way of thinking and helping you think critically. Um, outside of the classroom, like I said, I was doing dance marathon and that just gave me a different level of skills as well in terms of like managing my peers. Um, again, so much on time management special events, like all sorts of fundraising, all things like that. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, but yeah, there are definitely things STEM and psych taught me that I probably couldn't even list right now, but like be yeah. not being afraid to go just walk up to your professors, walk into those office hours, do not be mm -hmm. scared. <laughs> I, was, I was gonna say, I think that's really good advice and takes my next question away of like, what's your little like secret advice? But I guess I'll, I'll ask it just so we can yeah. get that. So, um, what would be your Brianna advice or your secret piece of advice that you wish all students, maybe not even just biology students, um, could, could have in college? Yeah, I'd say don't, don't let yourself struggle when there are so many resources on campus. Um, like don't struggle in silence. Like if you were having a hard time with a concept, if you're like, I'm in this class and I really don't know what's going on, take the time, go see your professor. And if you're still like, I'm not sure if this class is for me, you have advisors, you, there are plenty of free tutors and resources on campus for you to either figure out like, yeah, I'm going to make it through this class because I have to, it's in my major and I have to do it. 
or like maybe I'm not going to do this one and <laughs> maybe I'm going to switch mm-hmm. to something else um there's just so many people for you to talk to um like I said your advisors your professors just find an older student like in one of those organizations that you join pick their brains as well like hey I know I'm a freshman and you're about to graduate but can we talk about how you got here like let's um and you'll be very surprised most people are they love talking about their experience they love talking about them it's talking about themselves they will do it I think that's the key right there um so last two questions what do you wish future students would know about biology about biology majors um before they kind of jump into the okay I'm gonna rephrase that question because that just got a little a little too uh existential so what do you wish future biology students knew before they take their first class? Maybe not subject matter wise, but <laughs> an advice. Yeah. Um, what do I think students knew before they started? <sighs> that's a good, or, that's, that's a good, qu- no, I, I think I'm just distra- like, what would I tell a student before they got into it? Um, this is a little general, but I think that, hmm, and it is a little bit on subject matter, but um, take the time to like find what you love. Um, not every class within, and it doesn't matter what major you have, not every class you're going to love. Physics, I was like, Ugh. no, thank you. Um, <laughs> please get me out of here. Um, but it it taught me some things and if I went back and looked at my physics notebook I'd probably be like what was I doing like who taught me this like how how did I make it through this um but it was it was a learning curve it was something I had to get through and it pushed me farther than I wanted to push myself in terms of in terms of my academics um so some things is really like you you don't like it but you can do it um not every professor you're gonna like either. You can still do it. Um, biology and just anything, anything at college, it's not gonna be easy by any means. They're definitely gonna be nice when you're like, uh, I don't know what any of this means on my piece of paper. I swear I took notes and was paying attention that whole time, but now I don't know what I'm doing. They're gonna be nice when you're up at like two o'clock and you're studying and your friends might be like out and about in the world of college and you're like why am I the one stuck here studying at three o'clock in the morning um but it's because you might not like it but you still have to do it and you can do it and you gotta get it done um not every single day is a cakewalk um but the, the outcome I think is is worth it I agree I think that was very profound and our last question that I have for you it's kind of internal um, but how do you continue to be a lifelong student, a lifelong learner, especially through the lens of STEM? Um, I think STEM is one of those things that's it's constantly changing. So when you just have to kind of stay current, um, I'm not going to say that, like, am I reading a biology textbook every year? That'd be a lie. Um, I do feel like that lying through my teeth in this interview um I do try to just stay up to date within like the news of science like what's going on um in the field um I don't think that education and lifelong learning needs to always be in the form of a student teacher at a college etc situation um again lifelong learning is learn about other things that you love like take other courses if they're like I said, so many people, they graduate and they're like, I still love STEM. Don't get me wrong. Um, but I also love these other things too. And I'm going to pursue these other things. So, and whatever those other things are, keep learning about them, keep studying them as somebody who I'm like, I'm going to go get my master's in business. Did I think I'd be saying that 10 years ago? No, I thought I was going to be a doctor 10 years ago. Um, and here I am with my biology degree, like, no, I'm going to switch things up a little bit. Um, So yeah, so whatever you wanna learn, just keep learning it. STEM is great, STEM is important, stay current. All of these things are relevant. My, I think my most recent like biology, what am I learning? Learning how to be a house, not a house mom. I am learning how to be a plant mom and taking care of my plants. So I brought my ecology of organisms and all of that into my house um, and plants and all of that. And that's what I'm currently learning is 
how to keep nature alive because it's not easy. <laughs> no, I, I feel that uh, my house plants are a true testament to how uneasy, aka difficult it is to keep house plants alive. Um, so yeah, I <laughs> more power to you in that. Again, Ms. Bree and I talk a decent bit outside of this interview platform and we talk about plants a decent bit. Um, out there too. So um, anything else that I didn't cover that you're like, you know what, STEM, STEM for women, um, breaking, you know, STEM stereotypes. Is there anything that you're like, I just wish somebody knew this about the biology field or about the psychology field? Um, any final remarks that you're like, you didn't ask me this question and you should have. Um. This sounds really cliche, but I would just say whatever it is that you want to go for, just go for it. Like, don't let any naysayer sway your opinion, whether that's the boy in your class who's like, I'm smarter than you, or even that time you might get a D on a math test. Like, don't let that stop you from being like, no, I'm so, I still want to go to STEM. This is still where I want to go. Um, this is still what I want to pursue. I remember in high school, my senior year, um, I applied to Ooh, this is showing how petty I am. Um, I applied to Carnegie Mellon off of just a, somebody told me that I couldn't. Um, and somebody was bragging about how, like, I'm so good at getting there and Brie, you can never get into a school like this. So of course I had to apply um, on a whim, like just to say like, no, actually I can get in there if I want to actually. Um, sidebar, I got in and the other girl didn't, but that's beside the point. Um, but I remember a teacher of mine after me getting in was like, that's not the school for you. Like you, you don't be like pretty much telling me like, I don't belong there. Um, and while I didn't end up picking Carnegie Mellon to go to, and that's mainly because of Carnegie, I'm saying Carnegie, I can't even say the school, <laughs> the institution correctly. I thought you were using um, a Pittsburgh accent. I was like, okay, maybe, go for maybe, it. yeah, I'm a Pittsburghian now. Um, um, fuck, what was I trying to say? Um, but somebody, else, <laughs> I, I'm so disappointed in myself. Back to Carnegie Mellon and this this teacher telling me like, that's not the school for you, you don't belong there. Um, and for a while I was like really hurt by that. Like, why, like, why don't I belong there? Like, do you think I'm not smart enough? Like, what, what's the deal? Um, but ultimately it was like, you know what? I, I don't want to go there. Not because I don't think that she, not because of her. Um, but I just chose like that wasn't the right fit for me. And part of me is still like, maybe I should have just gone back there in spite of them. But that's, that's again, Miss, that's Miss Brianna being petty. That's in Miss Brianna being petty. In, in hindsight. hindsight <laughs> being petty about things. Um, but it, the, the point is like, don't let anybody and whatever they say, like stop you from doing it. I still went to school, still pursued a degree in STEM, um, no matter what that teacher told me. Because I had other teachers and other people like Mr. Welsh being like, no, go for biology. Like you can totally do this. Um, so shout out to him, he was great. All right, well, Miss Brianna, thank you so much for coming and letting me ramble and interview you and ask you all the ins and outs of your time um, at Temple and after and how you continue to be a lifelong learner. Um, I am Miss Sarah from Girls Inc. We are here to sign off and remind you and all people watching this video to stay strong, smart, and bold. Bye.